This is a production of SDPB. In the early days of Dakota Territory, herds of cattle grazed South Dakota's vast rangelands. Seeking forage and water, cattle roamed free. There were no fences to hold them, just wide open grasslands. Herds from different ranches often grazed together, and during the annual roundup, cowboys depended on the ranch brand to identify ownership of cattle. Over time, fences were installed by cattle producers to define property lines, and perhaps more importantly, fences help ranchers manage their cattle's grazing rotations to improve their grassland and soil health. But fences don't always hold cattle, and if they do wander onto a neighbor's land, or if they are stolen, their brand acts like a return address. It helps get cattle back to their home ranch. So even today, more than a century after some of the last big roundups, branding is much more than a time-honored South Dakota tradition brands remain essential to cattle production in South Dakota. Donors to the Explore South Dakota Fund support the production of local documentaries and other programs of local interest presented by SDPB. Friends of SDPB appreciates their support of this program. South Dakota is home to more than 3 million head of beef cattle. And apart from a few distinctive breed traits, colors, or markings, it's tough to distinguish one cow from another. So for more than a century, brands have been used by cattle producers to keep track of their cattle should they wander off into western South Dakota's vast rangeland. Brands were uh, some of the first uh, Dakota territorial laws were, were put in place in 1862. Uh, brand laws were put in place, the very first legislature they ever met in South Dakota. It's just humbling to be part of because when Custer came across here in 74, uh, the, one of the coolest things, he came obviously looking for gold and, and places to, to increase the wealth of the nation, but uh, what he found was a vast, uh, uh, gold in the, the grasslands and, and people were just uh, dying to get out here because of that. People like Gary Deering's great-grandpa Frank Wernig. You know a lot of our mines have shut down but we still have cattle operations. Gary is a fourth generation Meade County rancher. His family has been raising cattle west of the Missouri River for more than a century and their cattle have carried the brand W Lazy F for nearly as many years. It's a neat thing to have. It's who you are. It's 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 just like your name, you know. People people know you by your brand and and uh, they 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 know what your brand is and what it stands for and, and riding for the brand. I mean that that still means something out here and it's just uh, it's just like I said, it's been it's something that that uh, need to think back on all the history and, and how long this has been going on and, and uh, um, just to be part of that is pretty humbling. The purpose of a brand is possession mainly. You know. Um, if there's a lost or strayed or, or even a stolen animal, they can be traced back through the hot iron brand to its rightful owner. Like Deering, Les Shaw also raises cattle on his family's Meade County Ranch. The Shaw family brand is Quarter Circle Star. Uh, Western South Dakota is a brand side of the state uh, where we have brand laws. Whenever something is is transported to a sale barn. It's inspected right there at the barn before it leaves the state. It has to be inspected uh, before you uh, before you transport out of an inspection area. It needs to be inspected when you load the animal, so that they know that everything that you put on that on that truck or your trailer is yours, and that there is nothing nothing illegal going on. Uh, and, and a lot of times it's not illegal even. There, there are times we have it happen several times. There's a lot of Angus cattle in this country and a lot of, a lot of good cattle that, that look the same. Uh, you'll, if it's missing an ear tag or something, you don't notice it. And 
uh, when when springtime comes or summer and the hair off, you'll notice that that's that's not our brand. That's not our cow. And you call your neighbor and say, hey, you know, I, I I've got one of your cows by mistake. Where do you want her? And uh, it, that's the main thing. It's just possession. Since 1937, all ranchers with brands register their brands with the South Dakota Brand Board. Established by the South Dakota State Legislature, the Brand Board is responsible for administration, oversight, and inspection. Fourth generation rancher Debbie Trapp is the Brand Board's executive director. And like the South Dakota livestock producers she serves, each spring Trapp's family brands their new calves. On the Trap Ranch, the cattle brand is L Triangle. Trap said even with the introduction of electronic identification tags or EID tags, in South Dakota, branding is as essential to livestock identification today as it was in the late 1800s when the first cowboys ran cattle on the open range. She explained this to SDPB's Tim Davison during a recent interview. People are like, is branding going to go away? Mm. No, because those tags fall out. Yeah. You can c cut them out if you're going to steal something. But you can't take the brand off. You know? Right. It's going to stay. So. <laughs> Pretty permanent. <laughs> right. <laughs> the brand board is also responsible for keeping the brand book up to date. All registered brands are located in the print or digital versions of the book. Should you ever happen upon a cow that doesn't belong to you, the brand book is also the quickest way to return a cow to its rightful owner. Quarter Circle Star, Lazy Three Arrow, W Lazy F, names of cattle brands are nearly as unique as the brand itself. Whatever the cattle brand, there's a chance the stainless steel letters, numbers, and shapes used to create the brand were built by South Dakota's Lieutenant Governor, Larry Roden. For more than 40 years, Lieutenant Governor Larry Roden has built brands in the welding shop on his family's Union Center ranch. Started building branding irons when I was working at the welding shop at Inning and uh, really enjoyed branding irons because you know, nothing symbolizes a ranch, and ranchers, that's their, that's their trademark. And every rancher takes a great deal of pride in his livestock, and they take pride in putting their mark on that uh, livestock. There's, there's a lot of history there, a lot of, you know, genetics, a lifetime of work in those herd cattle, so they want to put their mark on them. And it also serves as a return address. Roden refers to the brand as a return address because Western South Dakota cattle producers mark each calf they own with a unique registered brand. This way, if a cow wanders onto the neighbor's property, it can be returned. Brands also help prevent theft because brands are inspected at auction markets. Everybody knows everybody's brand for miles around, and especially your, your neighbor's cattle. Uh, we've had instances where uh, didn't recognize the brand, uh, but that's why we have the brand book. Uh, and that's why it's important to have good brands that you can read. So you go to the brand, brand book and look up the brand. Now it's automated, so you can uh, do it in a matter of seconds. According to Rodin, a good brand is one that can be applied quickly to a calf's hide and leave behind an easy-to-read mark. You know, there's uh, a, a lot of Welding shops that build a branding iron will leave a lot of sharp edges. And uh, I start with, with my raw material and I round the face off, you know, so it, uh, it burns through the hair faster and cleaner and it doesn't slide around on the critter. Um, the other key issue is venting tight corners. If there's like a W or an M where there's real tight angles, they're very difficult to build an iron to keep them from blotching because there's concentration of heat in those tight areas. So um, I take a lot of time after the iron's built and venting, venting those trouble areas out so they, so they don't uh, blotch in those areas or blister the, the hide. 
Rodin officially became a certified welder while serving in the Army National Guard, but the fourth generation rancher credits his dad, Alan, with his ability to transform a piece of raw stainless steel into what he refers to as practical art. Well, so um, I grew up with a father that was kind of a handyman, and he could, he could make the proverbial silk purse out of the sow's ear just using junk. And so, uh, you know, I, my dad was uh, a true mentor to me, so I grew up trying to be like him. And like his dad, Roden spent much of his life raising cattle that carry the family brand quarter circle over a 7R connected. I would build a brand in iron and then I would use it and then I would watch it mature with a critter and you know over a period of 50 years and figured out how to do it right and uh, you know and that's important even from uh, uh, you know being humane to our animals. Over the decades Roden has built thousands of brands for ranchers across South Dakota and beyond. All told, Roden says most years he builds about 700 branding irons. The most memorable is NR Connected. It's the brand Governor Christy Noem asked him to build. After we were elected, we did, did a little research and we think we might be the first farmer, rancher, governor, lieutenant governor in the history of the nation. And uh, shortly, a week or two after we were elected, the governor asked me to register a, a brand, uh, so we went to the state brand office and we registered an NR Connected. And uh, I've made, I think, over a hundred of those now. And we put a leather tag on them, shape of South Dakota, and donate them for fundraisers, and, and it's been a lot of fun. A few years after being elected Lieutenant Governor, Roden sold his cattle to free up time to serve South Dakotans. However, he continues to build branding irons because he said the craft is therapeutic. I've always said I made probably more income out of my ranch shop than I did off the cattle or off the ranch. But really enjoyed it. It's always, always almost been like a hobby. I feel guilty when I come to the shop and start building things. Ranch families across Western South Dakota own registered brands. But for most, a family's brand is more than a mark of ownership. A family brand has a story, a legacy. It's often passed down from one generation to the next because for many ranch families, the story behind their cattle brand is entwined with the family's history. Great grandpa's initials, a wedding date, a business logo from the old country. There's a story behind most of the letters, numbers, and shapes that make up brands registered in South Dakota's brand book. Our brand is a quarter circle star. Um, my great granddad, the earliest registration we had was from 1902, a registration card on there. Uh, we, we haven't been able to trace it back further than that, but Gr Grandpa got here in 1896. And I surmise that he was using the brand, but it just wasn't registered. Um, my dad had it, uh, my grandpa had it, and now my brother and I use it. Uh, it's on the right rib of the cows, and that's, that's the Shaw Ranch mark. Well, typical family history, uh, my great-grandpa came from Ireland. And uh, he, he worked in a shipping factory. He had a warehouse, is what we were told from my grandpa. Not a lot, but grandpa said that he marked the shipping crates with a star. Well, I, I'm pretty proud of it. It's pretty neat. It's, it's not the easiest brand in the world to put on. Uh, the, the star can be tricky. Uh, it, takes, it takes some practice, but you get there with it. But uh, when it's put on well it, on a young animal, when they mature uh, like a cow, uh, it's, it, it stands out. It shows from quite a ways.
So yeah, my brand's a quarter circle over a seven R connected. Uh, that was my dad's brand. I'm on dad's place. My brother's a couple miles away on the original homestead for my granddad. And his brand was a seven R over the quarter circle. So they registered those at different times, but it's kind of typical, you know, of it just family history and that brand is passed on from generation to generation. And they were lucky enough to have a brand that you could use the same branding irons. So I'd always take all my irons to his branding and he'd bring them his back to, to mine. I don't know there's any story other than, you know, everybody picked a brand that represented them. You know, the 7R, there were five kids and mom and dad, so there were seven of us, but I don't think dad knew that when he registered the brand. But, uh, you know, obviously the R, but uh, they always register something that appealed to them or had their initials or, you know, something that was unique. Enough, I remember the conversation because I was on the place with him and, and, and he still owned the main herd and I had my uh, a share of the cattle and I bought a brand from a neighbor, a different brand. And he was telling, we were visiting about one day and he said when he was done, he was going to give that brand to my oldest brother who lived in Denver and never had any uh, wishes to come back in the place. And, and I corrected him. I said, well, I want that brand. <laughs> and, uh, and he was, he was tickled about that because if I was gonna give up the brand that I had bought uh, because I wanted that uh, brand passed down from the former generation. Nineteen eleven was a, a very dry year, and it's one of the big first droughts we've ever had in, in South Dakota and in the Midwest. And and uh, my my grandpa, great grandpa Frank Wernick, he was uh, looking for places to take the stock. So he he uh, he saddled up a horse and, and started going down the Belfouche River, and, and he ran into some people, and they had a had a little land on on the Belfouche River, which is just south of where I live right now, and that's that's where he bought that in nineteen eleven. Well, the F is backwards, and, and I don't know if, uh, if he intended to do that or not, to be totally honest with you. I uh, uh, never met uh, my great-grandpa Frank, but they tell me he spoke very broken German, so he might have just went in and put a mark down and, and didn't realize that it's lazy. Lazy meaning it's tipped on its side. Um, and the F, obviously, if, as, as this one would be, is if it was standing up, it'd be going backwards. So I don't know, like I said, when he tipped it on the side, if he was, if he had meant that, or he had some good German beer at the time, or what happened. But nonetheless, it's backwards. <laughs> yeah, it's a W and a, a lazy backwards F. Um, and like I said, uh, my great grandpa Frank Wernick, hence, hence his name and initials. I, I'm not real sure when it was first registered. I've seen it in 1930. Seven brand book, I believe. So it was registered as far back as, as then. I I assume he's probably used it with his initials, uh, whether it was registered or not. But uh, I, I don't know exactly how far that went back. My grandfather, George Wernick, then uh, uh, took over the ranch in in 1944, and now uh, uh, my parents and now I am using it. And my like I said, my kids are the fifth person, fifth generation to put that brand up. So. Rounding up cattle and branding calves is hard work, but often a ranch family does not go it alone because their friends and neighbors travel to help, making each branding a social event of sorts, with plenty of food and fellowship. Just what's needed after a long winter and late nights of calving. Each May, Courtney and Tim Michelson and their four children call upon family, friends, and neighbors to help them brand on their marine ranch. You know, Jake, back in Chicago, I never thought I'd be punching cattle, mostly belonging to other guys. Yeah, using trucks for wrestling's the latest thing. Come on, let's get going before them bloodhounds wake up. Stealing cattle is the thing right now that's happened out here since we've lived here. You think that's an Old West deal, but it happens every day across the U.S. right now even. 
when livestock are worth money, somebody's gonna wanna take them. When Tim was running yearlings, cattle went missing from on our place. Sheriff got called and they were never found. My sister-in-law lost, I'm not sure how many, a couple trailer loads, I believe, of sheep. They haven't been found. People are watching and when they know you're not there, they might come and steal them. So it's really important to have that brand on there because that's just one other way that the police can try to find your cattle for you. That'd just be like, your, anything that you own, any other human owns, they'd want it back too. And this is our livelihood. Yeah, it's a real thing that goes on all the time. Family brand, I purchased that brand from the South Dakota Brand Board close to 20 years ago. Well, Tim had the brand before he met me, so it's a Lazy 3 Arrow. It's just a one iron brand, which is really handy. For me, it's nice just because it's less stress on the livestock, it's quicker at branding. I, I don't like to hurt calves any more than you have to, or the cows, and so the less iron on flesh you can have, the better in my opinion. People from town that I've spoken to, even my sister, she thinks it's terribly cruel and mean. I can see where she would think that. It does hurt them. It's not a pleasant thing. Um, I like to think of it sort of like when you have a son and you're at the hospital and he's a day old and he gets circumcised. He's th It's quick. He's never going to remember it, you know? And so that's why I kind of try to think about it for the cattle. Yeah, it hurts, but it's quick. We try to make it as painless as possible and it serves a very important purpose. It's not just something we do to just hurt the cattle. As a beef producer, you want your beef to be the best that it can be, and if it's carrying your brand, that cow is always gonna be marked for the life as having come from your place. So the brand, as much as the cow itself, represents what you're spending your time doing, whether it's in the sale barn or makes good beef. The person selling that beef knows where it came from because of the brand, That's what it's all about. All the people here helping us, we will go help them at their branding. I mean, it starts in, in April, runs through the first part of May. It's just branding season. It's track season, it's branding season now. A lot of stress. <laughs> uh, well, Tim takes care of all the cattle stuff, setting up the crowds, calling the people. Um, he discusses like the dates with me and we figure out what date works the best. For me, planning out the meals, getting the vaccine. It's spring, so the yard's kind of a disaster, clean up the yard. So yeah, it's a good three days of work right up to the branding and then several weeks beforehand, just the planning. I know the wives are very underappreciated, possibly overlooked might be a better word for it. They don't see how much a ranch wife does to keep that ranch going. Whether it's encouraging or cooking the meal for the branding crew or the preg testing crew or the, you name it, there's something going on all the time. And yeah, can't say enough about them. There are a lot of wives out here that are a cowgirl and a ranch wife. I am a ranch wife, not a cowgirl. I grew up in the cities. I help whenever he needs me. I'm always there if he's got a prolapse in the middle of the night, I'm out there helping deal with that. Yeah, it's misunderstood that when you meet a ranch wife and you think, oh, all she does is sit at home all day and knit a scarf or something, that's not what's going on. I feel like I'm pretty lucky because the people we have help us are all kind of in the same boat. They're ranchers, they know what they're doing, they're good, solid help. I can pretty much say, here's the pasture, let's gather it. I might delegate one person to go one way with a group of people and one to go another, but for the most part, everybody can see what needs to be done. We're all pretty good about doing things the way that whoever's branding you're at wants it done. Everybody does it a little different. You learn what they want and you do it their way. At the end of the day, everybody wants it to go smoothly, no one to be hurt, least trauma on the cattle people step in, they see what needs to be done, they do it. Branding season lasts seems like forever for a while, so you get lots of practice and you get really good by the end of it. It does get to be a very efficient machine because 
they can see what's happening, they can see a wreck before it happens. I'm really encouraged with the people that we work with. They're very encouraging to the kids. They're telling them, good job, they're upbeat. They're not just being critical when they do something wrong. They're, they're being positive too, and it's a fun social time. I've said for a while that kids would work for food and a pop any day of the week, so. Everybody there has done it enough times that it just goes smooth, even if it's less than ideal conditions. Ranching is not a job. It is your life. That can be frustrating at times, but it really is your life, and you're really cultivating in these kids a love for this way of life by teaching them, letting them follow you, help with everything, even if they're just watching or playing a really tiny part of it. You're teaching them to be great stewards of the land, the cattle, to help your neighbor, to love your neighbor. We need somebody to carry that on. I don't think it's something you can just learn from going to school. You, you need to live it a little bit, so very important. I don't know as it's so much of passing on a tradition, but just keeping things alive and giving them the opportunities to learn and grow with knowing what used to be, what is, and what might be in the future and trying to adapt and still have a livelihood to do it with, I guess. I feel very proud of watching the kids out there to watch how they help others and how they're excited to go help others at other people's brandings. I know my husband, when we have been gathering before, has leaned over to me and said, Oh, I'm just so happy. Look at our herd. I've always dreamed of this. It's his dream come true. And he just feels very proud of it and very blessed that he's had this opportunity. It's, it's really hard to become a rancher without just inheriting or somehow having a really good way in. And God's blessed him and let him do that. Branding is among many traditions passed down to the next generation because caring for livestock and stewardship of the land is more than a job. It's a way of life that is ranching in South Dakota. <laughs>